Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing on with our space battle scene. Let's jump into it. Uh, yeah, I thought it'd be really fun to actually start the episode off with the uh, with the look at what we're going to be making today. So, one of the cool ideas I've had with this series is I actually want to do a bit of narrative and I actually want to talk about story a little bit. And I thought, what better way than to actually begin to weave a story and to kind of reveal it uh, episode by episode? So, so I was going. I'm going to delete the big one here because I'm not going to be using that. Um, I just use that as an example. And uh, I'm just going to focus in on hit the full stop key, come down to our main asteroid. And we're actually just going to make a few of these guys and make a bit of an asteroid collection. OK, so I'm going to switch over to my um, subdivision surface modifier. I am going to go ahead and add in one subdivision surface. Uh, make sure shade smooth is turned on and uh, we will keep this one here. That's fine. I'm going to create um, actually I'm just going to put them all here in the same spot. So I'm going to hit shift S. I'm going to go cursor to selected. Now I'll bring my cursor right down here. So now when I hit shift A and I go cube, I can grab here, uh, slide that on the X. And now I've got a cube that's right here I could work with. Um, so I'll just scale this up and uh, we're going to use a cube instead of a sphere this time. And I'm on the modifiers. We're going to go down here to subdivision surface. We're going to put that on there, um, set it to two for now. And let's go ahead and grab a uh, displacement modifier. Where are you? There you are. And uh, let's grab our asteroid displacement texture that we used earlier. We turn that strength not too far. We don't want to like kill it. Let's play with the mid level a little bit and scale this guy up some. Okay, great. Now, one thing we can do with this is um, I can uh, you know scale it around, kind of make it a general you know asteroidy kind of elongated shape, and then I can duplicate this, grab it on the X, bring it over, and then we can go into edit mode, and uh, I can grab some faces. And I can just extrude a few things. So I can hit E to extrude, maybe extrude again, grab it up, scale. Now if I pop out of edit mode, you can see it's actually continued to displace things um, in, uh, in a really interesting way. And I'm just going to add one more subdivision surface on top of these guys. I'm going to set the render just to one. I don't want to have multiples. And I'm going to shade smooth as well for each of these. So I'm going to make this my asteroid collection. So I'm going to make sure all of these guys are in the same asteroid particle collection. So I just need to grab all of them, asteroid particles, and just drop them in there. So now they're all in there. And I'll, I'll just copy this name and I'll paste it into each of these guys. And now what I want to do is I want to go to my actual uh, particle systems. Uh, so the asteroid emitter, I'll just jump up to that. Oh, that's right, we're not selectable. I got to turn selectable back on to be able to grab these guys. And uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to change down over here at render. Uh, from object, we're going to change that to collection, and then we're just going to select asteroid particles collection. Now you can see we're going to be using all of those guys. Now we could also use the count uh, if we wanted to, to you know maybe limit you know the first one if we don't like this oblong shape, we don't want to have as much of that. Um, you know we can increase the count on some of these other ones. Another thing is to grab uh, one of these guys and uh, scale it up so that we've got some that are really big, some that are small. What we want to do next is uh, we want to improve the material. So I'm going to just zoom in on one of these guys. And let's have a look at them here. I'm going to go over to my shader editor. So we're just going to drag this out, switch over to shader editor view. And in here, we're just going to switch over to our rendered view. Okay, now if you ever get this where it's all white, two things. One, wait for this little bar to finish. There we go. So you can see it's done and it's all still white. Oh, there we go, it popped out of it. One, one thing that fixes that that I've noticed is if you turn off one of your lights like that and then pop it back on again, that can help. Uh, just need to kind of refresh the renderer. All right, let's go over to material and uh, let's assign our asteroid material to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the same material in on all of these guys. Now I messed around a lot of this the other day, um, just trying to find something that I thought looked really cool. And um, I found something I thought that worked really, really well actually. Um, and it's not, not this. Um, so I'm gonna use a noise texture, the noise texture that we already had. And I'm going to use two of them. So I'll grab a second one here. And uh, I'm going to just bring the scale right down on both of them. 
and we can have a look at this and I'll show you what I worked out. So we take the factor and we're going to plug that into the vector. And then we're going to take the uh, factor here and plug it into the height. And I'm going to go ahead and turn subsurface off on this thing. It'll help us kind of see things a little bit better. And in order to see the bump, I'm just going to turn up my distance. Because these are really large objects. So we need to say that the distance between all these height and, you know, the height and the, the depth of the, the bump is, is much, it's a much greater distance. We increase the scale now of this one. We're going to get these really nice kind of ridges and stuff and pock marks, which are really, really nice. And it's just because both of these are affecting, like going into each other. Um, if we increase the, the detail level on the second one, we're going to start getting these little ridges, which uh, look really pretty cool. So I might give us a few of those ridges. And then this one here, if we decrease the detail, you can see what's going on, how it works. So this is really going to add in that, that chunkiness. Um, that that texture that we want. All right, cool. Now, um, I've decided, so I've settled on a strength of 0.628 on my bump, a distance of 30, roughly 30.8. And then for the noise textures, the first one, we got a scale of 4.8, details 13.5, distortion zero. Scale on the second one is 2.2, details three, and distortion zero. Again, I got to those numbers just by playing around. That's all you got to do. And it's going to be different for you because as you can see in my little ones, actually, you know, this, this bump might be a little too harsh. So we might want to have a separate texture for the smaller part, for the smaller asteroids uh, compared to the large ones. But you can see it really does some nice stuff um, along these guys. All right, so now let's apply this to the, the color itself. So um, let's grab a color ramp and I'll pop this right up here and I'm going to stick the factor into the factor and I'll take this and I'll bring it over to the base color. Now, if I bring these together, you're going to really start to see that uh, the lower areas are dark and these higher ridged areas are bright. And uh, we can use that to really create some nice, nice variation. I'm going to take this off white. I'm going to bring it right down to more of like a gray. I don't think I'm going to put any color in it. I think I will keep it black and white. I'm going to bring this one off black. So just bringing up the vibrancy a little bit. All right. So now what we can do is let's uh, let's take these and let's let's do some stuff for our specular and our roughness. So um, right now I've got a roughness. If I bring this down, we're going to get a little bit of shine on the tips, which is kind of nice. Kind of gives it like this icy look. So what I think I want to do is let's have the, the tips be icy and then the base is not be. So um, I kind of want to find what's the level of roughness that I really like. Like where's my where's the look coming from? Like what's the the lowest value of roughness that I that I want to see? And I think it's probably around here. Like this looks about right. So 0.445. So what I can do now is I can make it a color ramp and I'll keep it with the same. So I'll duplicate this one, right? Because I like this sort of the, the way the color is falling off. I've got the right level of compression in the color um, between the dark and the light values. So I'm going to keep that the same because I want it to kind of match up with my color. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to say, okay, um, I want all the, the bright bits. So the bits that are colored brighter here, I want them to be shiny. So that's going to be this side of the thing. So uh, the brighter bits are going to be the, uh, the lower roughness number. So 0.445, I'm going to take this one right here, 0.445. So I'll just put that value, the 0.445 value, um, into the R, G, and B channels here for this one. And then what we'll do is we'll grab this one here, and I want this to be where it's really rough, so like almost no reflection at all. So I need to bring this all the way up almost to white to get that. And now I can plug the factor into the factor, and the color can plug right into the roughness. Now you'll see we'll have the same kind of roughness, the same kind of reflection material like we had a second ago, but it'll get darker as it goes in. There we go. So now it's it's actually being affected by the the shape of the object, which is which is really nice. We can even increase that a little bit. Um, bring up that contrast a little bit more. And now the same thing for the specular. So um, the specular is going to make it shiny or not shiny. But of course, the specular uses a different system. So one is very specky. Zero is not specky, whereas it's opposite for roughness. Zero is very, very shiny. One is not shiny at all. So we can't use the same. And so the specular value that I want, uh, sort of the most that I ever want, is probably about this, 0.7. I'll make this top end 0.7 in each of those guys. And then this one here, the other one, just click that, and I'll make this one, bring it right down to black. Now it looks much more 
alive. Really, really cool. Okay, now that we've got some asteroids that we're happy with, let's go ahead and get our background ambient asteroids uh, moving around a little bit. All the fire asteroids use the same material, right? They use the little texture that we rendered out last time, piped in through an emission. Um, that's blended with the transparent shader for the, with the alpha channel. What we want to do is we want to basically animate that so that it moves. Um, we want we want this actual texture to kind of drift across because otherwise we're going to notice that these asteroids are just sitting still. So to do that, we need to animate the vector. Uh, so what we can do is we can come in here and we can grab a texture coordinate node, drop that down, we'll grab a mapping node, drop that down. We're going to take the UV and plug it into vector. So UV, remember we set up for these guys specifically. Um, and uh, so we can use that UV information and just offset it. So I can pipe this into the vector. You'll see that um, they don't move. They stay the same. But now if I move the location, they're going to slide around. We're going to animate that property, but because it's the same material in all three of them, and I don't want to like make a bunch of different for asteroid materials for each one, I want to have one material and I want them all to move different at different rates. Um, just so for more variety, more variation. So in order to do that, I need to actually have a number that's different on each of these guys. Because right now, if we go, all right, um, let's create a value node right there. And let's create a combine, uh, combine X, Y, Z, this into the location. So we're just, this is just, this is the same thing. We're just separating it out so we can kind of control what's going on a little bit more specifically down here. So now I'm going to take the value and I'm going to pipe it into, all right, so we're going to be moving along the x-axis. Um, if I set a keyframe, go back to frame one, right, and just zero this out and set a keyframe here with I on the keyboard and then like come forward a little bit on my timeline and then set this to one, let's say, hit another keyframe. You're going to see they're all moving at the same rate and it kind of kills the illusion. It doesn't really work and it's like ultra fast too, so I should probably drag that way out. So you can see they're all just kind of moving along and it just doesn't really feel, I don't know. They are, they are different because they're different sizes, but I just think we could do better. Okay, so how do we do better? If we created you know, a different value and we tried to adjust it or change the keyframe, it's gonna change it for all of them because they're all using the same material. But there is something different about each of these guys and that's their position. So look at their position. This one's right here on the x-axis. This one's way out over here and this one's right here. They all have different positions on the x-axis. So we can grab that information. Okay, and it'll be different for each material based on where it is in our scene. So if I go here and I go geometry, the geometry node gives you information about the piece of geometry your material is applied to. So I can actually grab the position of every object that this thing is applied to, and it's gonna be different for each object that this material is assigned to. So if I come down here to separate X, Y, and Z, I can take the position and pipe it in. And now I can separate out the X position, the Y position, and the Z position of this guy. Because I only want to take one of these values. I want to use the, the X position because that's going to be different for all of them. Okay, so now all we have to do is create some math. So we can take this guy right here and we could say, all right, let's, let's get some math going. And I want to divide, let's say, um, divide this value, this arbitrary value that we've come up with by the X value that it's, you know, is for our object. And then I'm going to pipe this right into my, um, the X of the, the location. All right. So, and now that we've set this up, um, we actually, we need to have a different value because if we're dividing by, you know, like one, we're not actually, it's not going to be moving much. It's going to stay the same. Um, so let's, let's, let's fix that. We'll come here and we'll just create like a larger value. You can see already just from there that they're moving around. So it's like 278 and there you go. So now you can see they're actually moving at different rates. Um, grab this one, bring it in. Now you can really see it. And that rate is affected by its position in the world. So now you can see that they're all moving at different rates. And that's all based on their X position. Now this rate now may not be exactly what we want, but you know, you get the idea. Uh, so now you've got something different happening for each of them. So it's a really, really cool way of, of breaking that kind of motion up so that you've got different variety. All right, so now what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna have this thing animate in a way that we can control. So, uh, and wanna have it so that it's always gonna be moving. Um, so what I can do is I can go over to my graph editor. This is where we can edit the splines and stuff for our animation. I can open up, so make sure that the value here is selected and that's gonna give you access to the stuff that you have keyframed here. And we got this default value, can't see it. So if I hit A to select all and then the full stop key, that's gonna to zoom to it. So just like with geometry, it would zoom to it here. 
You can see here that we've got the two different values that we've set. And uh, what I want to do is um, I'm going to actually delete this second value. And this one here, I'm just going to open up this little side menu right here. And I'm going to go modifiers and I'm going to click generator. And right now, all this is going to do is it's going to generate an additive value to this, this positional point. So our first keyframes there, it's just going to keep adding stuff onto it. It's going to go on forever. So this is how we can modulate kind of how fast we want these things to be going. So we just have a look, you know, and say like, oh, that's pretty good. But you know, and I want to slow it down a little bit so I can drop this number here and that's going to bring it down or we can, you know, go up. So I'm going to keep this set to one right now. We won't really know until we get in the camera and actually start seeing the shots that mean you know, exactly where we need to do it. But this way we can have a very, very long timeline. We can have a lot of things going on and we don't have to worry about continuing to remember to come back and change our keyframes down here. And that's really going to save us in the long run. Cool. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to start getting in the spaceship into the scene and start mapping out our motion. So let's do that. Now I've made this spaceship already. Um, I'm going to bring it in. I'll show you how to import stuff. So to import um, an, an extra a model from another place um, and you want to bring it into your project, all you need to do is you go up to file and you go append. Where is it? There it is. You can link and what that does is it actually creates a link between the two files. So if you change anything in the first file, it automatically updates in the second. Um, I haven't tested this in a long time. Like I'm talking about years, but last time I used it was maybe like six uh, five years ago and it was really buggy and it it I, I corrupted some files and things fell apart so i've been really nervous about ever using it since it may be a whole lot more stable now but um i haven't really tested it much so i tend to just use a pinned to be safe so i'm going to bring in a pinned here and i'm going to select uh my my ship let's see i've got it in scenes hero ship three seven a pinned and then what you're going to do is when you click append, it's going to open up the project file and it's going to give you all the different things in the project file. And what's really convenient is if you uh, have collections that you put objects in that you want to then import. So I've created a collection that has everything I want to be able to import if I bring it into another file. So I've got my hero ship collection. So I'm just going to click append and you just wait a minute and it'll appear within the hierarchy of our scene. So there it is. I've got my hero ship in place. So now I can zoom in on it and I've got my my super cool ship. Now, if you want to learn how to make this uh, the ship, the tutorials uh, for modeling this and rigging it are all on the Patreon. So if you want to become a patron, you can do that and you can get access to all these tutorials um, that are over there. And you can also, if you get a high enough level, like I think uh, $10 and up, you can get the project file itself and just use this ship in your own, uh, your own project as well. All right, cool. So I've got my spaceship. Let's go ahead and get him into position. Now, when it comes to narrative, one of the things that are uh, really important is how to introduce your scene. Um, but there's a lot of little things we're going to talk about when it comes to story. You could have an animation and you could just we just bring this guy in, we can have him fly around and shoot some stuff and bloom, you know, and it's going to be great and exciting, whatever. But if we want to really create something that's going to connect to an audience, you need to think about uh, character, you need to think about mood, you need to think about tone and story structure. And these are all really important things. So what we want to do in terms of starting this scene out is we want to think about what's the tone we want to set and what's the, what's, what are we going for with the scene? So this tone I want to set with this scene is a feeling of mystery and a feeling of uh, apprehension, like something is about to happen. Why is this ship come to this asteroid field? It's obviously a dangerous place. It's not a place you want to be flying around in a ship. So what's he looking for? What's he here for? So this sense of mystery and a sense of uh, intrigue. I want to kind of reel the audience in. So in order to do that, the plan here is I want to have my ship warp in, but I want to do it in such a way we can't really see the asteroid field yet. We just have a few asteroids. We'll kind of introduce the asteroids. So then we're going to do a big reveal where we cut to this dramatic shot with all these asteroids floating around and then our ship flies into it. And what that's going to do is it's going to help kind of begin the scene off with a sense of excitement and anticipation because we're going, hey, something's here, you know, something's there's this kind of you know, this bit of intrigue, these hints of these asteroids and then we show this big reveal of all the dramatic asteroids. What that's going to do is basically kind of, I don't know, it's like setting up our audience to go, hey, this this might actually be a good story. I'm interested because they've just done something that's interesting right here. They've they've tinted at something and then they've given me a reveal. And that was really satisfying. And I wonder what else this storyteller is going to do. Maybe they're going to satisfy me in some other ways that are really exciting. So um, it's sort of a promise of 
hey, I've got a good story to tell you. You know, here's some asteroids. Boom, dramatic shot. Really cool asteroids. Just wait till you see what's next. Sort of setting the tone um, and setting the expectation of the audience. Hope that makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy in position. I want to position him kind of way off uh, out at the edge here. So we're just getting a little bit of asteroid action. Now, um, with our rig and stuff that we set up, we're not going to be using the camera um, uh, track that we built uh, last episode yet. So this one's pretty simple. What, what you'll find is what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up kind of creating multiple files probably um, where we use this scene over and over again to do these different shots. Um, and it's going to be really important that we refine this and keep coming back to it. But um, but it's going to be like our base project scene. Um, so let's uh, let's take, I'm going to take my ship and I'm going to grab him on the X, drag him kind of right out here. I'm also going to get out of EV so we can see a bit clearer. And I'm going to turn him around. There we go. Now he's facing the right direction. Perfect. Okay. Um, now I'm going to take my camera and uh, in this particular scene, I'm going to, uh, I will, I'll just get rid of the constraint that I have on there at the moment, the follow path constraint. And I'll take my camera and I will uh, grab him on the X and position him right over here where my ship is. And I'm going to rotate him on the Z 180 degrees so that he's pointing in the correct direction. I'll hit zero to jump inside my camera view. And I'm going to just zoom out a little bit, get rid of my shader editor for now, bring this down, uh, just so I can see the edges of the frame. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to click lock camera to view. And that's going to enable me now to position my camera however I want. Now, there's a lot of ways we could think about how to position the camera for a shot like this. Oh, one thing too, you can see I'm scrubbing forward. I'm not making any progress. Um, two ways I could fix that. I could just click on the controller and hit the full stop key. And that's going to make this the center point of my focus, which allows me to then zoom in towards it. Or I could just affect my location, my X location directly. Um, but I have to make sure I select my camera. That's the that's the catch. All right, so um, we can reveal the ship, you know, kind of like flat, flat on like this, but you can see it doesn't really give you a sense of what it is. It doesn't really look as dramatic or as cool. Um, same with like kind of being dead on at the side. So what I want to do is actually reveal it a little bit up, probably not down. I want to up because the personality of this ship is in the front. This is where like kind of the, the, the front of the ship here is kind of what we'll associate as the face of this character. So showing the face to the audience is pretty important right off the bat. So I'll just bring this up. So we've got a good view of the of the face. And this is going to be um, kind of where we land this shot. Now, I want to have a look at the asteroids, okay? And just kind of see what are they looking like and where are they in conjunction with this shot? Like, that's kind of cool. But let me, I'm going to jump out of the camera. Okay. And so just untick lock camera to view and we zoom out. Let's just have a look at the overall flow of these guys. Now, one thing I think might be better is if all of our asteroids were kind of going in a bit of an orbital fashion. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to go back up to my asteroid emitters and I'll turn on selection for both of them. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to hit shift S and I'm going to say cursor to world origin. That'll put my cursor right in the center of the scene. I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to add in a force field and I'm going to add in a vortex force field. Okay. I'll scale it up so we can actually see it. There we go. Now this is going to automatically affect all of my particles in the scene. I'm going to create a bigger timeline as well. So I'm going to go over to my timeline. I'll drag this up and I'll say, let's go to 600 and let's jump to the first frame. Now you can see this thing is automatically sucking everything into it and gives it this nice spin effect, which is really, really cool. Um, and this may be actually all we need. This is kind of nice. Um, it's way too fast, but it's it's definitely cool. So let's go to the force field. We're going to drag it into the world. Um, and I'm going to go to the settings. So where are we? Down here in the physics tab. All right. So we got a lot of different things we can play around with here. Um, we're going to take the, uh, I'm going to make it a point. I'm going to turn the flow up to 10 and that's going to slow things down a lot um, and give us this really nice kind of gradual motion. I'm going to put a bit of noise into it. Uh, not that much, just a tiny bit, probably like 0.5, I think. And um, we might try absorption. That could be good. But let's see. Um, I'll go to the fall off as well. I think I'll just leave the fall off as is. And uh, I'm actually going to have a look at what does the reveal look like. Let's get the other shot set up too. So we're thinking about both of them together. So I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to create a new camera. And um, now if I hit zero, 
uh, my number pad, I'm just going to jump into the view of this camera, right? So let's grab this camera, bring them into the camera collection. And what we're going to do is hold down control and you click on the camera itself. This makes this the new active camera. Now, if I hit zero, I'll jump inside of it instead. So I'm going to lock this camera to view and I'll just zoom out. And uh, of course, this is a new camera, so we got to change our, our uh, far distance plane, uh, clipping plane, I mean. So if we go down to the camera tab and go to the clipping plane, we're going to add a couple of zeros to the end there so we can actually see everything. Um, and with this one, I want kind of like a focal length of 50, so this looks pretty good. All right, now one thing I'm noticing is that the back asteroid texture is way too big. So I can see that it looks like a kind of a cheap texture to me. Um, they're just, they're a bit too close, I think, as well. So I um, also feel like I could darken them up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. I'm going to open up my shader editor and get this looking good. Let's grab the far asteroids. And where the emission strength is set to one, I'm just going to drop that right down a little bit. That's going to darken them up. That's good. Okay, now I'm going to just bake off uh, my particles. So I'm going to my asteroid emitters and just come under cache. And then you want to click right there for bake. Um, and that's going to give us a bake. Now that we've got all this stuff in place, then uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and I'm going to grab my, um, grab my sun object. I'm going to bring it into place. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And uh, I might take my camera here um, and I'm going to rotate him a little bit on the Y, just like so. And then I want to take um, some of these asteroid particles that we've got and uh, I'm going to make some really big ones. So I'm just going to hit Shifty to duplicate, grab it right up till one of them is in view, and then I'm going to scale this guy up. Now I'm just going to mess with the shape until I've got something that I'm happy with. So I've continued to just tweak and tweak and tweak, and I've, I've put, basically I've taken a couple of the different asteroid pieces that we've made um, and uh, duplicated them, scaled them up, and then just duplicated them again and again and kind of stacked them on top of each other to get, to get these kind of formations um, where they're just kind of, you know, sitting on top of each other, just to create some really nice, interesting shapes um, and to try and create some variety in those shapes. So you can see it's really starting to feel like a really imposing scene. Now, um, we're just using the kind of leftover lights from the last time uh, we did this um, We did this render. So we want to tweak these a little bit um, and just kind of move them around just to kind of see, all right, what's, what's the lighting going to look like if we change it? Um, we'll probably end up lighting um, each individual shot a little bit separately. So once we get a shot worked out, we'll probably come in and say, all right, let's let's figure out how to make the light look really good now um, to really nail the atmosphere and the mood of the shot. So right now it's looking pretty cool. Um, I might come over and you'll just be tweaking these things. So the specular we can drop down just to get rid of that ping, but I think the ping's kind of nice. We've, it's really worked out quite well. If we drop the angle, it's going to decrease the amount of spread that we get on the light. Okay. Now, um, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and map out our camera motion. Now we'll animate these big guys manually in a minute, but um, first thing I'm going to do is think about, okay, let's get these two shots to work together well. So let's jump over to our second shot. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the camera here. Um, so uh, I've got my camera selected. If, you, um, if you're having a hard time moving around, you can select the object that you want to focus on. And with the camera selected, make sure you've got a lock camera to view. And then you select the, the object you want to be focusing on. You hit the full stop key on your keyboard. And that'll just focus your camera on it as a center of view. So now you can pivot around it. It makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and I'll turn off all of our guides and stuff. And um, I'm going to start right about something like this, I think. Um, I'll go ahead and hit a keyframe for my camera. So make sure you have your camera selected again. And then we would just hit uh, I for location and rotation. And you just hover over these. You don't have to, it doesn't matter which one you're over. If you hit I over any of these, it's going to set a keyframe for all of them. And let's come forward to like frame 60 maybe. And I will move forward and up a little bit, center it up. And 
get that kind of over overhead view, that overhead angle, um, which looks pretty cool. And hit I and I again. So now we've got this nice kind of dramatic camera move. Now my uh, asteroids are going nuts, uh, and that's probably because I need to bake them. So let me come over here and do that. So yep, just click bake and do that for the next one as well. Click bake. Now we're not going to get that crazy, crazy asteroid motion. All right, sweet. So I get this nice kind of camera move, real subtle. I'm going to um, just pull up my playhead here, and I'm going to go to the dope sheet, and that'll make it a little bit easier for me to manage my keyframes. So let's select the camera again. And I'm going to grab the first keyframe and just drag it out. Uh, and I'm also going to take both of these keyframes and uh, I might make them actually, nah, that's all right, we'll leave it for now. So we've got this nice kind of motion. I feel like we're a bit too high maybe on this one. So I'm going to come down a little bit and maybe just bring the ship up some, reset those keyframes. That's a nice shot. All right, cool. Now we need our ship to warp in. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the ship. And um, I'm actually going to select a vertex right at the tip of the ship right there. Shift S and I'm going to have cursor to selected. And that's going to put the cursor right there at the tip of my ship, right at the front. I'm going to tab out of edit mode and then I'm going to create a an empty. So I'm going to shift A and go empty and it's going to make one right there at the front of my ship. I'll call this warp control. And what I'm going to do is take um, my warp control. I'll bring it up into my, uh, let's see, we'll put it in, put it in our world collection. And I'm going to select my hero ship controller uh, right here. And then I'm going to shift select my, or control click my warp control. And I'm going to hit control P in the viewport just to parent the ship and its hero ship controller to this object. Okay. So now what we can do is we can take this warp control, deselect everything, and uh, we can use the scale value to create this warp effect. So we're going to scale on the X. So we'll start at, um, let's see, scale X, which we'll is scale this thing up. You can see it's going to start stretching our ship up. And we want to stretch him all the way out to the horizon. So we might go all the way up to 100, let's say. And I'll set a keyframe here, and then I'll come forward a few frames, and I'll set it back to one, and hit I to set a new keyframe. Now I've got this vroom, cool warp in effect. All right, now next step. Let's also take the position. So I'm going to go to this keyframe right here. I'll hit I for the location, and then I'll come back, and I'm going to grab this guy and hit grab on the X axis. I'm just going to go way out. To, not to infinity, infinity, but um, just far enough out that we can't really see him very well. So I'll just keep dragging that out somewhere out there, like maybe 3,000. And I'll hit I to set another keyframe. All right. And now they're kind of working in tandem a bit too much. So we just need to separate them out a little bit. So I think what I'll do is I'll take the scale and I'll drag the scale forward a bit. So it'll be like that. Turn off my controllers and stuff. Yeah, cool. All right, now the next thing I need to do is have a bit of a light ping for when that warp starts. So if we start like right about here, let's say, um, I need to create a, let's see, let's create a UV sphere. i grab it on the X, scale it way up, grab it on the X. I'll put it out actually in the same position. We know it was at 3000. So I'm gonna scale that right up and I'm gonna create a new material for this thing, I'll call it warp. And I'm gonna assign, uh, instead of the principal BSDF, I'm gonna switch to the emission shader. And I'm gonna turn the strength right up so we get a really big ping of bloom. And I'm gonna give it a slight, kind of like a blue tint there. And maybe even scale it on the, on the Y axis so it's like this kind of, you know, narrow gap like thing, kind of cool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a keyframe for the scale and I'm going to come to right about here, maybe, and I will set the scale to zero on the Z. And then I'll come back a few frames and do the same thing. So zero Z. In fact, I think I'll also zero out these guys as well, or at least just the Y. Cool. All right. Uh, it's not quite doing it for me. So I'm going to go to that middle keyframe, scale it down a touch, 
and maybe scale it up on the Y a little bit. Um, in fact, I might even just bring it right down and just bring the strength right up. So let me hit that keyframe and let's go right right there to that, that center keyframe and then we'll come back to the emission. I'm just going to keep cranking that strength up. I might just go up to like 1500 or something crazy like that. So we just get this huge bright spot. I feel like it's a little too slow. So I'm just going to grab those keyframes and scale them down. Sweet. All right, cool. Now um, what I can do is I can take um, that object. I want to make sure it doesn't stick around because I don't want it flickering in the background. So um, come to our um, come to the warp object. Where is it? Hit full stop. I'm actually going to go ahead and grab it and drag it into my world collection. And uh, I'll call this one warp as well, just so it's clear. And then right over here, the render and viewport settings. What I want to do is when I'm right over here, and it's all kind of scaled down. I'm going to set a keyframe for both of those. And I'm going to go forward one frame and then turn them both off and set keyframes. So now it's definitely off. I might keep it on before then. So there's like a little bit of a twinkle. It looks pretty good. All right, great. So we've got our introduction. Our ship kind of flies in. Now I don't want him slowing down like this. So I'm going to switch over to my uh, graph editor and uh, let's bring this up a touch and I will get my hero ship controller and uh, what I'm going to do with that is um, I'm going to oh no it's our camera that's moving he's not even moving so let's come back down to our camera and I will find the second keyframe so let's see it's gonna be these guys I'll just select them and hit the full stop key actually I hit all and hit the full stop key and that should be it yeah here we go it's the X one. That's what we want. So it changes like the way you see these, the curves, the size of them. It tries to fit them all in. So if you just select the one you want, you know, like we just clicked for X um, and like selected the X one and then hit full stop. It's going to focus in and really give you a good sense of what the curve looks like. But I just want to right click on this one and I'm going to go interpolation linear. And that's going to uh, interpolation linear. There we go. So now it's this nice linear straight line. So now next thing we're going to do is go back to the timeline. And uh, we're going to create a marker. So we're going to have marker, add marker. And I'm going to right click on that marker and I'm going to, oh, sorry, go up to marker menu and I'm going to say bind camera to markers. And that's going to put our first camera bound to this marker. I'm going to find a nice moment. And I want to do my cut probably right about here. Um, and I'll go ahead and go marker, add marker. And then I'm going to select my other camera and then marker bind camera to marker, sort of bind it to, to every one you've selected. So let me get this nice dramatic reveal. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to take my hero ship control and we're going to animate this thing flying forward into the view. So I'm going to select it here and I'm going to go ahead and create a position keyframe. So I'll pull this guy up, go to my object properties and I'm going to hit I and I might do one for rotation as well. And then I'm going to scrub forward a little bit and then I'm going to grab him on the X and I'm just going to drag my ship forward in the scene until he appears. Now you can see he's like way, 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 way down there. So what are we going to do about that? Well, let me uh, switch slot camera to view. I don't want to move my camera around because I like this shot. Um, what we can do is we can actually grab the hero ship. And even though it's kind of like doesn't make sense you know, we were in one place and now we flipped around and we can see, oops, actually this can't start position is not in the right spot. You know, the cameras should be way down here and stuff. We could reposition the camera or what we could do is we could just cheat and we just grab our ship and put it exactly where we want for the shot. There we go. And then what we can do is we can just pull him right back so that he's out of view. And this keyframe right here is basically going to be locking in the ship at that start position where we want him for this shot. When we get to this shot, we don't want him here. We want him in this other start position. So now I can just hit a new keyframe for the rotation and the location. And I can just grab that and bring it right over here. So now it's basically just going to jump from here to this new spot while it's off camera. And now what I can do is I can come forward to like frame 160, grab him on the X and bring him forward. And now it's going to look a lot better. All right, now let's see the length of that shot. So come in, boom, he flies by. I'm going to drag this right out to maybe 300. Let's make it a little bit longer. Yeah, cool. Now also to get a better sense of this shot too, what we need to do is take our camera, the second one, and uh, we need to turn on pass part two. We need to crank that all the way up. So under viewport displays, just so we're not seeing anything else outside of our camera, that'll just help us get a sense of the frame. Great. Now what we need to do is animate this camera. So what we're going to do is a bit of a, a contrary motion. So um, 
I'm going to set a keyframe right here where we start and a keyframe the rotation as well. And I'll go out to frame 300 and I'm going to just pull me, pull myself back on the X axis a little bit like this. Um, and maybe just rotate on the Y so I can hit I, or let's go the other way, opposite to the ship, I and I. So there we go. Now we got this nice pullback. All right. So now that I've got a nice movement between these two shots, I want to actually go in here and grab some of these asteroids and just reposition them just to get a frame that I like. It's a little bit better now that I have my final frame in place. I do want to make sure my camera doesn't slow down. So I'm going to go find my camera and uh, we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So right click on the keyframes interpolation and set that to linear. That way when we cut to this shot, it's immediately moving. And as we get to the end, it doesn't slow down. It just kind of keeps going. All right. Now, one of the features that we've got on our uh, on this uh, really cool hero ship is, um, of course, this, this sweet little bit that we've added in here in the properties, the wing fold. Uh, so we got to do that, definitely. So when we fly in, uh, from warp, we've got our wings folded up and I want to have them open up. So like that, and then keyframe for this, come forward, take that down to zero, hit that. So now we fly in. Very cool. Now I'm pretty happy with the lighting in both of these in this shot and in this shot here. I think it's working well together. So I'm going to keep that as is, but that may be something you have to tweak a little bit individually. I also like the way this nebula is kind of helping to bring out this asteroid down here. I think that looks really nice. Um, I think it's really coming together really, really well. Okay, cool. So um, the next thing I want to do is add in a little bit of heat ripples on the back of this thing so that we've got this like kind of uh, you know, that, that look that you get when you have something really hot, it's distorting the airwaves uh, or it's distorting the light waves as they're coming at you. So um, this is going to be a pretty simple effect. So I'm going to make sure I've got um, my view locked, turned off from camera. And um, I'm just going to have a look here. I'm going to grab my ship and uh, you can just work with any ship so you don't have to have this particular one. Um, I'm just going to grab one of these vertices at the back here. Um, it doesn't matter which one really. And I'm going to hit uh, Shift S and cursor to select it. Get out of edit mode. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a plane and we're going to line that plane up just with this back part of the ship. So I'm going to hit Shift A, mesh plane. I'm going to rotate on the X, uh, no sorry, on the Y, rotate Y90. And I'm going to scale it up, bring it down. Now I'll rotate it a little bit to match, scale it on the, the Y, just bring it right out. And then bring it back so it's just in front of everything, um, just like so. All right. Now, what we're going to do is create a special shader that's going to distort things. Okay, so let's come over here to the materials, click new, and we'll call this um, heat waves. And uh, we're going to use, uh, we're just going to go to the shader graph. It's going to be easier that way. So let's go up to shader editor. All right, so heat waves, how do you make them? Well, let's get rid of the principle BSDF because we're not going to need that. And let's grab a shader. We're going to go down to the, uh, where is it? Uh, refraction BSDF. We'll drop down the refraction BSDF and we'll just plug that into the surface. Okay. Now what we can do is keep roughness at zero, the IOR at 1.45, that's fine. IOR is like the refraction index of something. So different objects like water or plastic all have different refraction indexes. So how do they refract light? And you can look those up online. They're, they're technical values that have been researched. So you can just input the exact one for the material you're making and it'll look a lot like that material. It's a really great trick. We're going to create a noise shader. And uh, we're just going to plug the factor straight into, actually, no, we're going to grab it out. We're going to create a bump map as well. And we'll crack, take the factor and throw that into the height and we'll take the normal and we'll throw that into the normal. Now, nothing's going to happen at first because this is EV and we need to adjust things uh, so that, that we can see through them. So let's come over here in blend mode. We want to go alpha blend shadow mode. We want to go none and uh, we can leave uh, show the back face for now. That should be fine. And then we want to come over into our render settings and we want to come down to under screen space reflections. We've got a little box here for refraction. We turn that on. Now, once we turn it on here, refraction, we also need to turn on here screen space refraction. We'll just turn that back on. Okay. And then we can see we're starting to see through this. So let's come over to our bump. Let's turn the strength right down. So we just want a little bit of bump, like just a little bit. Let's increase the scale up a little bit. And you can already see where we're going with this effect. 
um, it distorts all everything that's traveling through it really nicely. So we can get this really cool heat effect. All right. Now what we're going to do as well is we're going to come over here and create a texture coordinate node. Now let's take the, the generated and plug it into the vector and the vector will pop into the vector. And then we can change the scale. So let's maybe scale it up on the Y so it's more of like a horizontal thing. And then what we want to do is we want to animate this um, X value and we want to animate it in the same way we animated the other um, the, the, the value of our asteroids in the background, meaning that we want it to just kind of continually move in one direction. So let's create a value node and um, combine X, Y, Z. Let's plug the combine X, Y, Z into the location. And then let's take this value node and we'll plug it into the X value. And now this will control it moving up and down. And now what we want to do is we just set that to zero. We'll go to the first frame of our animation and we'll hit I to set a keyframe. And then let's open this up. And once again, go over to the graph editor. And with this value selected, let's see it's right here. Um, hit A to select all and full stop to focus in on it. Go over here to the modifiers tab. Remember if it's hiding, just bring it out and we're going to add a generator. And once again, there we go. We've got this constant uh, generator point. Now, one thing I did fail to do was parent it to the ship. So that's why it's sitting out here in the middle of nowhere. So let's just get back to the point where our ship is in view and right about here. And let's grab this thing and then let's uh, control click the hero ship controller and we'll just hit control P to parent. And then we also want to make sure this is in the right collection. So let's hunt it down. Um, there it is, plane. So we're going to drag the plane into our world. All right, I'm just going to scale it up a little bit and then line it up on top there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kind of cut it off so that we don't have it right up to the edges like this. In order to do that, we need to create a uh, gradient node, gradient texture. And we need to, let's just, we'll just use that. Let's plug object into the vector. And then let's bring this right over here. Let's grab an emission shader so we can see what's going on. And let's take the factor and we'll drag it into the color and we'll take emission. We'll pipe it into the surface. All right. So that's the gradient texture. We want to switch this to spherical. And now we get this nice spherical node. And then what we want to do is we want to grab a color ramp. And this will allow us to just kind of change the size and the fall off of this, this thing. So uh, set this to ease and it'll be even softer. So I'll just bring it in just a little bit. And then what we can do is what we can do is we can take a, um, a transparent shader. Again, transparent shader is just like a basic shader for making things transparent. Um, not a lot going on, so it's a bit fast to work with. Um, and then we want to have a mix shader. So let's take the transparent shader plug it in there, the refraction shader, plug it in there, turn this all the way up. And what we're going to do is plug this in. And what we want to do is we want to mix these two together based on this factor. So uh, when it's zero, we don't want to see anything. And when it's one, we want to see the refraction thing. So we can use this that we just generated to do that. So that's how we're going to tell it, you know, to work. So we'll see if we got it right. Yeah, cool. So you can see that we're only refracting right here in the middle. And as we get towards the edges, um, that starts to go away. So we don't, we no longer see the shape of this thing. So if I turn off that, you can see it's hidden really well. I might even scale it up a little bit more. So we just get a touch more action there. So it's probably a little too intense. So I'm going to turn down uh, this value here. So instead of one, I'm just going to drag it to like 0.2 or something. Cool. So that's really covered a whole lot of material. We have been all over the place with this episode to get this first, the first two shots set up. But um, overall, I hope you really found the effects that we used in this episode really useful and uh, that you've got some tools now you can take and apply to your own projects. I hope you're getting excited about what's going to happen in our scene. I know I am. I can't wait to show you what I've got in store with the story um, and what we're going to have happen inside this asteroid field to get this action sequence kicked off. So if you are excited, uh, please feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to just have everyone subscribe so that you can find out when uh, when we got more episodes coming. Ring the little bell to get notifications. Check out the Patreon if you want to find out more. If you want to get the um, the tutorials on how to make the spaceships that I'm using in this series, you can go over to, to the Patreon there and you can, you can get access to that stuff. And uh, also you can get access to the project files there and the models as well. Plus on um, Blender Market, check us out there. We've got stuff like from Particle City there that you can get a hold of and use in your own projects. 
very exciting things to check out. Once again, thanks again for watching. I just really appreciate all the support and everybody being involved. And I hope you are learning a lot as we make our epic space battle scene. All right, I will catch you later and uh, have a great week. See ya, bye.